This is your brain on risk. This is Mind Over Money, the podcast where Kevin Cook exposes the psychology of investing. Welcome back to Mind Over Money. I'm Kevin Cook, your field guide and storyteller for the fascinating arena of behavioral economics. In a recent episode, I featured a gentleman who has designed what I believe is the ultimate personal finance software. It's better than anything I've ever seen. That episode, which came out on May 12th, was titled Get Your Money Game in Top Shape with Mark Harvey, the Money Plan Coach. What I loved about Mark Harvey's approach was the comprehensive nature of the platform for all areas of your financial life. And all the calculations were just connected so you could create scenarios for anything you wanted to model or project or plan. Mark is also big on getting getting to people when they are young with financial education and tools like this. So be sure to catch that episode if you haven't yet because it's packed with good perspective from a guy who was cutting his teeth in the mortgage market over 30 years ago and now is uh, not only a registered investment advisor, he's also holds the title of enrolled agent with the IRS, which is pretty rare. That's a guy you want uh, helping you out if you ever get a call from the IRS. Um, as I was helping Mark look for other podcasts to get on and spread the word, I came across another gem of a teacher, Robert Farrington of the collegeinvestor.com. And I just want to share uh, sort of an introduction to the collegeinvestor.com, uh, which is a, a really cool website and has a lot of resources. Uh, it says the mission is to help you escape student loan debt so that you can start building real wealth for the future. So uh, the site helps you navigate personal finance decisions, escape from debt, even earn more money, and, and most important of all, learn how to start investing, uh, which does require that you have your financial house in a little bit of order um, as far as budgeting and saving. So he's got uh, advice, gu guidance, guides, and they review tools um, so that if you're interested in seeing how a certain tool works, you can. So Robert Farrington, let's, uh, he calls himself America's millennial money expert and America's student loan debt expert. And the college investor, he's been doing this since, uh, he's been on this mission since 2009. And it's, so it's become the number one resource for helping millennials get out of student loan debt and start building real wealth for their future. In Robert's personal story, it says uh, he, <laughs> he was uh, interested in all things money when he was 13, when he got to do his own taxes. And he was excited about that just because he'd earned enough money to even pay taxes. Um, once he got into college, he would meet other people who are interested in investing, but he found that some people were uh, they're kind of into the penny stock thing, and that didn't really uh, suit what he wanted to do. Um, and when he went to graduate school, though, he started meeting people who were really interested in, you know, the the hardcore of learning, investing, and personal finance. And then he talks about his college investor moment. And I'm just going to read this. He says he started a blog to showcase his common sense student loan and investing strategies with other millennials. He said at work and at school, he heard some pretty scary advice <laughs> and he didn't like it. So he started the college investor. He wanted to be as transparent as possible with information and highlight the good and the bad. And then this, this is where student loan debt came in because he realized the number one dilemma holding back millennials from investing and building real wealth is student loan debt. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, right? If you're saddled with debt, you're probably not doing a lot of saving to put elsewhere. And he says it was his struggle for a while too. Uh, he wrote an ebook, Student Loan Debt, Getting In Smart, Getting Out Painlessly. And if you go to the collegeinvestor.com to the about page, you can find a link to that free ebook. Through his years of helping others, he's come to the conclusion that developing multiple streams of income, investing, side hustling, and more is another key to building real wealth. So he doesn't consider himself a guru, but uh, we're happy to have him on. And Robert, welcome to Mind Over Money. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's so I'm just uh, amazed that I didn't know about you before because uh, what a resource. I, I I just love the idea. You basically, when I look at what you do, you're flipping the script from from kids who go into college and end up with, you know, fifty, eighty thousand dollars worth of debt and more if they go to graduate school. Um, yeah, they're not thinking about investing. They're just they've got this huge weight on their back. And you're showing them how 
you know, how they can flip that script and become an investor even while they're in college. Um, and so how do you do that? What, where, where do you start people out? Do you start them out like uh, take as little debt as possible or start saving and investing even as you're accumulating that debt? I mean both. So honestly, I love to be able to get to people early before they start their college journey, ideally like the high schoolers or their families, because I think that's the that's the real crux of it, right? If we can prevent people from getting into a, a heap of debt that they can't afford, well, we can have a lot better conversations throughout the rest of your financial life, right? Yeah. But the sad the sad truth is, is that most people are discovering us in their mid twenties and they're trying to navigate student loan repayment and tackling their other financial goals. And so really that that's what it comes down to is it's a lot of education. Like, Hey, this is how you get started. You can get started for like, you know, five bucks these days. I remember when I started investing, um, commissions were still 10 plus dollars to execute any trades. Um, you know, like you had to have an account minimum of a thousand bucks or something like we're in this really amazing day and age where you can get started with nothing. It doesn't cost you anything to invest. And so what I really like to to show people is just it's the the basics, how it works and, you know, the simple math behind it, right? Because if you can get started when you're 18 to 22, even if you can only save invest 50 to $100 a month. I mean, that's going to be game changing wealth for you by the time you're in your 60s. Problem is, is most people don't start this journey until they're in their late 20s, early 30s. And, and that decade plus of lost time, even if it's not a lot of money, it really does cost you a sizable amount of money. And just to catch up, you have to put so much more into the pot, right? So I really like to teach people financial balance, how to navigate their student loans, how you can do both at the same time, and why it's so important that you get started as early as, as you possibly can. I really like what you said about you could even start with five dollars because you know it's that case of you don't know what you don't know. And and I'll just tell my story real quick. In the 90s, I was fortunate to work for a company where I got a 401k with a nice match, and it was my first real savings program. And the automation of that with the match, like before I knew it, oh my God, oh my God, I got $1,000 in there. Oh my gosh, I got $3,000 in there. And it just, so it was building my money muscles and discipline that I never had when I was in my 20s. Uh, and so it, it also meant that I never wanted to break it. Like, I don't want to break that thing. That thing is growing really nicely. So for you to say that somebody can start really small, that it, it will sort of pull them into this automation thing that's working for them. And they'll be like, wow, this is cool. Right. I mean, hundred percent. And you just mentioned your 401k match. I love free money and everyone <laughs> should love free money. Right. So I think a lot of people don't, you know, we don't have a formalized personal education system in this country. A lot of people only learn through observation. Um, sadly, I think that the data shows that a lot of people learn money habits from their employer because it's that mindset of the hand that feeds you, right. That they should somehow know better. And so you might not be getting the best advice, but if you can start with the free money with a 401k match. If you can get free money with a health savings account match, or, you know, some con employers contribute that, like there are so many free money options out there that you could be putting thousands and thousands of dollars away each year um, without really even feeling the impact to your own budget every month. Uh, on the collegeinvestor.com, you've got a lot of great uh, article resources, and I want to focus on three that um, address the the different cohorts here. And basically the, the first article is the college student's guide to investing while you're in college. And your argument there is, hey, why should we talk about that? As you said, it's, it's about time in the market. And you've got a nice, in that article, you've got a nice uh, uh, table showing, you know, if you, if you, how to get to a million, what it would take to save. And, you know, it's roughly like, let's say you start around 20 years old, it's about 200 bucks a month you could get to a million dollars, you know, you could reach that kind of goal. So then you talk about opening accounts. Let's shift to the, the, the millennial who, you know, has the college debt and hasn't started investing yet. So you've got an article there, how to start investing after college. Uh, and so, so there you've got the table again about, um, you know, what you need to save or invest per year to reach 1 million. And the numbers start to go up. And I think, it, it, you know, for instance, at age 22, 
you'd need to save $3,600 to get to a million. By age 29, you're talking about 6,400. But this shouldn't be a this shouldn't be a psychological impediment to the millennial who's who's 25 and hasn't started yet, right? It doesn't have to be because those numbers are are relatively small, right? So I mean, thirty six hundred dollars a year literally could be your four hundred one k match, <laughs> like especially when you're at this age, right? And I think it's important to realize that it's it's a combination of things. So. I'm a big believer in the multiple income streams and it's also the multiple ways to save, right? So when you're in your 20s and probably your early 30s too, one of the biggest like biggest resources that you have is time. You have time on your side. You have time to let the money grow so the amounts you need to save are smaller, but you also have time in your day typically. A lot of young adults under 30 typically don't have a spouse or aren't having kids yet, and that means you have time that maybe you could take a side hustle or you could work that overtime or you can do different things that you could earn a little bit more so you can grow the pot to invest it. You can use the pot you have and put more into it by, you know, cutting spending or leveraging those free money tools. But the real thing I like to share with these tables is just what it takes. So, you know, by the time you're 26, you need about 5,000 bucks a year. It's $400 a month, but it does keep growing. And if you wait longer and longer and longer, um, you need to put more and more away to achieve the same financial goal than if you were to start earlier. Another thing I like about this article for the uh, the millennials who haven't started yet, starting after college, is that you've got other opinions in there. You've got articles by other uh, financial mentors, um, so it's not just it's not just Robert Farrington's voice. You have a, you you feature a lot of other voices in terms of uh, smart money behavior. Yeah, because I think, you know, there's a lot of questions there, too. It's, you know, the whole, do you need a financial advisor? Should I use a robo-invest advisor, right? Like, I mean, gosh, I just think of, like, when I started, there was, like, none of these options out there. And now um, I almost feel like young adults face analysis paralysis in terms of what app should I use? How do I get started? How much is enough? Do I need somebody to help me? Like, what's a reasonable amount to pay for advice? Shoot, then you get into the how to pay for advice because there's five different business models there. So it really does get overwhelming for someone when the truth of the matter is when you're young, under 35, none of that matters. The number one thing that's going to make a difference in your financial well-being is literally just how much money you can possibly get into your investment accounts Um, because you don't have enough to really change the game right away. You need to like get that nest egg building and growing. Um, and then you can start thinking about more sophisticated questions. That's a great point about all the technology platforms and choices, because uh, since all this stuff has come after my uh, youth, um, I look at the kids today, I'm like, God, you have so many great tools and choices and there's no commissions and everything is on your phone. <laughs> and yet, I understand how that can be overwhelming. There's too many choices, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, do I use this app or that app or this advisor or that advisor? Or, you know, the traditional brokerage houses or who knows, right? Like the yeah. list goes on and on and on. <laughs> and as you say, the, the the most important thing when you're in your 20s is just to get started. It doesn't matter what tools you use. Just get started because you can move. It's so easy to move stuff too. You can change banks and brokers and apps anytime you want. Absolutely. But, you know, like, again, if you're not getting any money into these accounts and getting it growing, it, right. it's all moot. These questions don't matter. Like when you have two hundred dollars in an app, like, I'm sorry, you're not going to retire off that. It's not going to help you. It's not going to change the game, but it's a starting point. But if you start putting that two hundred dollars in every single month over the next couple of years, then you start getting to a point where like, hey, this could start making a difference in your life. Now, the third article is for our uh, our are millennials who haven't started yet. Um, you know, they're in their thirties and, um, you know, so that you're having a serious conversation. You're talking about balancing investing with their real life events, right? There's marriage, there's kids and there's, uh, the decisions get more complicated, but it, it's still really critical to be thinking and making those decisions about your goals, your near-term goals and your long-term goals, right? 
Absolutely. So I think it's important for people to realize that millennials these days are in their low 40s, right, all the way Mm -hmm. through their late 20s. And that generation is facing, you know, choices on both ends. They're probably having to help their parents. Um, They're approaching retirement. They might have to be making financial decisions for their parents. But they also are starting families, right? And they have young kids. And maybe they don't want their kids to face the, the same, you know, hardships they had, right? Maybe they don't want them to have student loan debt. Right. And so it's like, how do you balance these different goals, whether it's your parents, whether it's your children, whether it's your own short term and long term goals, your own retirement? Um, It gets very, very overwhelming for the 30 year old cohort of people in this country with all the different, um, you know, challenges that they're facing. And then, heck, you throw in a pandemic in the mix and nothing gets easy. Right. (laughs) Right. Uh, in in this article, investing in your thirties, you also have uh, a segment on: Do you need a financial advisor? Because um, you know a, a lot of people at that point are they have enough assets that they've got some pretty big decisions to make. So so getting some help uh, is important. Um, do you have something on your site that helps them sort out the difference between, say, uh, a fee only advisor versus? Um, you know, other types of advice? Yeah, you know, we definitely uh, do. I have a, a sad article, honestly. It's one of my one of my favorite articles, but it's it's just how honest financial advisors should talk about their fees and how they charge people and different things. Because I'm not against financial advisors. I think they definitely serve a purpose. But, uh, you know, not everyone needs them. And there's a lot of fee structures for how you pay for a financial advisor, whether that's fee only, you know, uh, whatever, right? There's different ways that you can pay for it. Um, And I think you as a consumer, as an investor, need to understand like what you're paying for, what you're getting, and do you need this? Um, Because most people don't need anyone, I believe at least, to help them pick their investments. And I think that's what 90% of people think a financial advisor is for. When I think you really know the reality is, is to help them navigate all these other um, psychological behavioral decisions and also just navigating the system of like estate planning and insurance and what type of account they need and, you know, beneficiary planning, all this other stuff that has nothing to do with the actual individual investments in your portfolio. That's where a financial advisor can actually be very helpful, right? And so what are you paying for? What are you getting? How it works? Um, And really understanding all the differences there. Uh, last week, I happened to have a young Gen Z advisor on the show, and uh, he talked about his planning process, and it was just really a good exercise. He's a, he's advice only, so he just charges this you know this set fee. sits down with people, you know, does an interview, does a diagnostic on their goals and 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 so forth, and then creates a plan. and And he either helps people implement the plan, or he says, "Here." You can go do this yourself because a lot of his clients are very tech savvy. So they're like, okay, yeah, I can go to a robo advisor and just and just do that myself. And then they just have a plan to check back every quarter or every six months on how the plan is going. And I honestly think that for the majority of people, I think that is a phenomenal way to go. Actually, that's how my mom does it. I I don't I wanted her to get that advice and we just went with an advice only person. But she's completely capable of executing the plan and logging into her Schwab account and clicking the right buttons and doing it. But, you know, I think it's important to understand the tax implications of the different account types and how your beneficiaries are all set up and are you properly insured and all these other questions that, you know, aren't investment management like that. That's literally the easiest thing these days. But there's a lot of other things that you can get help with. Yeah. My guest uh, was uh, Zachariah Schaefer of um, Ascent Personal Finance, and he, he said, you know, um, when he, one thing he does for his clients is if they have a question, obviously we can Google anything we want. <laughs> but sometimes you go on Google and you end up going down a rabbit hole for five hours and you're not really sure you have the right answer. That's where it, it helps sometimes to have somebody who's who's got the training and, is, and has been through that who can answer that question you know, pretty quickly based on your needs. Totally. I mean, it's the same thing with like professional tax help as well, right? Like anyone could go and do TurboTax, but at the same time, are you doing it right? Are you getting your questions answered? Is it the right thing for your situation? And yada, yada. I mean, yes, I I completely agree with you. 
one of the fun things that happened in my uh, in my show with him last week was just that morning I get a I get a daily uh, email from wealthmanagement.com which is just a summary of their stories online and stuff and they have a series called my life as a client and what was neat is that um, the the author that week was Vaughn Hebron who was a running back for the Denver Broncos. Uh, and I think he started out with the Eagles and he retired in 99, but he made it to a couple Super Bowls with the with the Broncos. Uh, but he was talking about how, you know, in the NFL, he wasn't making the big bucks like a lot of other players. Uh, and so he thought, yeah, I'll just coast along and, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't need an advisor. I don't need to invest. And he said part of that was that he came from a, from a background where nobody talked about investing. Nobody talked about the stock market. So it was all foreign to him. And so when he finally met a financial advisor just by chance in, in one of his gyms uh, after retirement and got to know him, um, he realized you know, that that part of his life was missing and that he could have he doubled or tripled his money if he'd really gotten yeah. started early. Uh, but anyway, the good news was for him, and he was just very positive about it. He's like, he works with, his advisor got to know him, created a plan. And, and what was funny is, is Vaughn's like, I just let him run the show. Like, I don't want, I'm not a person who needs to ask a million questions and know every detail and decision. We make a plan at the beginning of the year and then we talk about it the next year. <laughs> well, and I think that's uh, that's a great insight though about all of this, right? Is I think the biggest key to managing your money and handling it is understanding yourself and what you need as well and what your personality style is. And like, are you the tech, tech savvy one that wants to dive in there? Or you do you just need it all on autopilot to run? Like understanding yourself is almost a bigger part of the whole money equation. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I really agree with that. Hey, tell me about your audio show. So you've, uh, you don't, you, you don't, call it a podcast you call it an audio show what do you like to do on there and how often do you do it yeah so we post on the college investor audio show you know three to five times a week depending on the week and really all it is is our written content translated into a podcast so it's an audio show because we don't have guests or anything like that but we have our great educational content and it is in listening format so we have a really great radio host that can ad lib and and make it enjoyable to listen to but i would say our average show is anywhere from 6 to 12 to 15 minutes um and it's just a great piece of financial content that you can listen to and enjoy. And it's it's very counter to, I think, most of the um, podcasts and audio experiences out there. I mean, some of these shows drag on for two, three, four hours, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And I don't know about you, but you know, my drives and stuff are usually 10 to 15 minutes. And it's nice to be able to get a full piece of content in, in, in my time. And I think we've gotten a ton of responses. We're coming up on 2 million downloads. Um, so it, it, I think it's resonated very well. Wow. That is a great idea. Yeah. Get some, give me some bite-sized financial info that I can get uh, on a quick drive or, you know, while I'm at the gym or something, where do we find the audio show? Any of your favorite podcasting platforms, wherever you're listening to this right now, you can just hit the college investor audio show up. <laughs> Okay, so we just searched College Investor. Okay, great. Yep. And I'm going to take a cue from the College Investor radio show and keep this episode of Mind Over Money short. <laughs> so, Robert, I want to thank you for coming on and uh, talking about the resources on your site and the and just the, the fantastic philosophy that you've been pounding the table on for over 13 years with, uh, you know, Start investing as young as you can and and get the uh, get the advice and the help you need. Yeah, I mean, that's it, right? It's like, I, I'm a big believer in keeping things simple. It's just putting things away, get the money in the account as early as you possibly can. However you want to do it, whether it's earning more, budgeting, finding that free money, get it into those accounts so that you can start watching that money grow and you can get that wealth growing for yourself. Thanks again, Robert Farrington of thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks so much. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified 
identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's Investment Research as a whole.